Um, so my name is Richard Darst. I'm here to, well, I'm one of the instructors and organizers of the course. And with me here, would you all like to introduce yourselves? So Yarno is next on my screen. Uh, did Yarno's internet? Ah, oh, there. Hello. Hello. Uh, sorry, I was just switching to a wired connection. Uh, good idea. <laughs> um, so, hello, I'm Yarno. I'm also one of the instructors and a research software engineer at Aldo University. Hi, I'm uh, Diana Yushan. I'm a application expert at the uh, Uppsala Uppsala University in Sweden, and I will also be teaching during this workshop. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay, so what I'm screen sharing here is what we call the notes. So right here. Um, you can't see the cursor. So this is only for registered participants. So if you would, if you're watching and you're not registered, if you register, I think you'll get an auto reply that has this information here. So how does it work? So at the top, it has all the important links. And down below, we see, well, it's like Google Docs. So it's a collaborative writing thing. So, uh, is, I think the microphones might be wrong here. Diana, uh, Yarno or Diana, can you say something? Hello, one, two, three. One, two. Okay. It seem, oh, wait. Okay, now I think it's better. Yeah. I know what the problem was. Was if if there was an echo, that was me. So there's a question in Twitch chat, which is asking, is this recorded? So the answer is yes. So Twitch has the videos available immediately. And on YouTube by the same night, it should already be there. And we can talk about the video processing later. But okay, so back to the notes that we're talking about. So if you go to the top, you can switch to an edit mode and then back to view mode. You can even do the split mode, but we use this like a chat. So anytime you would be asking something in a chat, instead come here and write it somewhere. So you see at the bottom, there's a Q and A part. So someone could demonstrate writing the question. Like, let's practice writing the question. Uh, is this recorded? Um, and then we have a whole bunch of people who are also course instructors and we're watching and answering it in real time. So it's like a synchronous parallel chat Q and A kind of thing. So with this, we can have so many different um, like questions and answers at the same time and actually keep track of it. And then we can archive it later. But for now, we have icebreakers. So if you scroll up, you see some questions from registrations and so on. But then down here to icebreaker questions. So everyone that's registered, please take this open it um, and scroll down to this point and write down where, or write down the answers to the questions. And let's see. So you can also answer plus one for anything that you're agreeing with. And this is also a common thing. So if you see something that you'd especially like answer or you agree with, you can plus one it. So where's everyone, where, where are we from? So right now I'm from a small office at Alta University in Finland. And 
I guess Yarno is teaching from home today. Yeah, from somewhere in Espo, Finland. Yeah, and I'm uh, in my office in Uppsala. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we see a big variety of people from well, mostly European countries, but not only. So that's good. We're glad that people can join us from all over. And how much do people use Python? Fair amount, quite a bit. Uh, how much have the instructors used Python? So I don't know, what was your intro to Python and how long have you been using it? I don't remember, which is, I guess, <laughs> for a long time. Um... Yeah. So at least six, seven years ago. Just so I don't remember the first thing I did with Python. But yeah, I do mm -hmm. most things with Python these days. OK. And before Python, what did you use? Um, C, C++ mostly. So mm -hmm. I was doing very different kinds of things. So mm -hmm. those were mm -hmm. appropriate languages for what I was okay. doing. Yeah. And Diana? Yeah, I had uh, started with C, um, some C++ and Fortran. And it's mostly during the, uh, I don't know, maybe five years, past five years that I, I've uh, been using Python. OK, yeah. And as for me, I remember. So at first I was doing some stuff in C and I had this friend saying I needed to learn Python some, um, but I didn't for a while until I did. And well, I've been using it as my main language ever since. So, yeah. And let's see, so our audience here, how much have we used Python? Yeah. So I'd say this whole course, it's designed for people that know a little bit about Python, like the basic programming, but not the details of using it for science. And we're especially going into these libraries. But if you're more advanced than that, you'll probably still learn some tricks. Although the first few days may be a bit slow, just come back for the later days. And if you haven't done any Python at all, well, we're not covering that, but by watching, you'll probably learn about, well, learn some good things to help when you do start using Python. OK, using Jupyter before, almost nothing. So Jupyter is something that we talk a little bit more about. And I believe, who's the first instructors here for the Jupyter part? It's uh, me and Yano. Okay, yeah, so Diana and Yarno will talk about that. Oh, these Jupyter Lab extensions. Mm. So maybe I should oh. give some background on why we asked this yeah. question. So uh, one of uh, uh, our, well, some of our participants are working on hearing what those are, but we won't really have time during the course. And it's also great to hear from you all. But if you do not know what those are, don't worry. Yeah. Okay, so it's time to start the main part. 